Good afternoon. Welcome to Ways and Means. We will be having an executive session on a number of bills, but I want to alert the audience we will not be taking up the two last bills that are listed, House Bill 607 and House Bill 445. We are having another exec session next Wednesday. I believe we're starting at 11 a.m. I will confirm that, um, but we're just not going to do the last two. We're going to move those off one week so we can spend a little more time on those. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need a gavel. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Hold on. But before we begin, we have some special guests here today. Um, could you just, starting at this end of the room, if you're if you're new to Ways and Means, say hello and introduce yourself. I, I'm an experienced member of Ways and Means. I was on <laughs> once before. So, I'm, I'm Janine Nodder here, subbing for Dan Hines. Excellent. And regular members over here and over here. Yes, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Lata Manjipuri, rep from Nashua. This is my first time on Ways and Means, and I'm subbing for Representative Malloy. Welcome. And I'm Representative Myrna from Lancaster, and I am filling in for Representative Spilsbury. Thank you for joining us today. Anyone else new here? No, all the regular members are here. <laughs> okay, with that, we will open up the executive session on House Bill 15, and the chair will recognize Representative Janigan for a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion to retain HB 15. Is there a second? Second. Representative Almy seconds. Representative Janigan, do you have some comments on that? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, um, I think it's best to retain um, this bill right now while we get additional information on um, revenues coming into the state, and we'll get a better idea by retaining that and looking at it again in a little while. Other comments from the committee? We've hashed this out a lot. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, if there's no other comments, the question before the committee is on the motion of retain, and the clerk will call the roll. When uh, Representative Janigian. Yes. Rep Representative Ullery. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. The clerk votes yes. Uh, Representative Nodder. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Representative Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Malloy. Uh, sorry, uh, Manager Pudi, I was not made aware of you. So I've got to change all these forms that I had prepared in advance. Yeah. Uh, Representative uh, Manager Pudi. Yes. Representative Schomburg. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Yes. It, the vote is 19-0. Oh, it's here. Yes. <laughs> 20 zero. <laughs> the vote being 20 to zero to retain, the, the motion carries. Okay, moving right along. Uh, the next bill we will open is House Bill 100, uh, repealing the interest and dividends tax, and the chair will recognize Rep Representative Janigian for a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, make a motion to retain HB 100. Is there a second? Second. Representative Almy seconds. Would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, again, I think on this bill we need uh, a little more time a little more analysis, and uh, we will revisit. Other discussion? Seeing none, when the clerk is ready, he will call the roll. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. 
Representative Plentfuls, yes. Representative Nodder. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Representative Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Manjaputi. Yes. Representative Schomburg. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Yes. And the chair. Yes. 20 to 0. Retain. The vote being 20 to 0, the retain motion passes, and uh, we will keep it and continue and revisit. Uh, we will now open the pub, uh, the executive session on House Bill 133 relative to repealing the communication services tax, and the chair recognizes Representative Janigan for motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on HB 133, I um, make a motion to retain. Is there a second? Second. Representative Almy seconds the motion. Would you like to speak to your motion? I would. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Again, I think uh, we need to a little more information uh, before we make a final decision on this tax cut. Other comments or discussion? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. Representative Plattfoss. Yes. Representative uh, Nodder. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Representative Ames. Yes. Reven so uh, Representative Southworth. Yes. Rep Representative Manjapudi. Yes. Representative Schomburg. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Yes. And the chair. Yes. 20 to 0. All right. The vote being 20 to 0, the retained motion passes. We will now open up the executive session on House Bill 192 relative to the rate and exemptions of the interest and dividends tax. And the chair will recognize Representative Janigian for a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion of retain on HB 192. Is there a second? Uh, yes. Representative Almy seconds the motion. Would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, as, um, thank you, Madam Chair, as with the other um, tax bills, uh, we need some additional information before we make a final decision. Any discussion or comments from the committee? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. Representative Plattfoots. Yes. Representative uh, Nodder. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative or Rochefort. Yes. Ro Representative Almy. Representative Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative uh, Manjapudi. Yes. Representative Schomburg. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Yes. And the chair. Yes. 20 to 0. Again. Okay. The vote being 20 to 0, the retain motion carries. Okay. We will now Hold open. On. Yep. Sorry. Take your time. Janigian. Yeah, sorry. And I'll let me retain. I don't know why this wasn't written down. Oh, different bit. Another one, just in case. Uh, so, uh, sorry.
sorry about the delay. Um, and uh, there it was. <laughs> and we are taking up bill what? Sorry. We're going to do House Bill 220. We're just going in numerical order. Okay, you all set? Yes. Okay. We will now open up the executive session on House Bill 220, establishing a committee to study the regulatory structure of charitable gaming, and the chair recognizes Representative Ames. Thank you, and I, I move to retain House Bill 220. Is there a second? Representative Doucette seconds. And would you like to speak to your motion? A few words. Uh, this bill is a study bill, and it overlaps with a bill that the Senate is currently uh, has actually acted on. I discovered this uh, morning that it has uh, uh, gone through two committees. It's been amended, and it's uh, now going to come to the House uh, in its amended form. It overlaps with this committee. It's, an, it's a commission rather than a c committee, um, but the charge is uh, overlaps, but it's not the same as uh, the committee that would be set up under House Bill 220. So I think we need to retain in order to assess uh, where this one fits in and where the other one fits in. Other comments or discussion? Oh, Representative Ulrey. Uh, Re Representative, could you explain to the new members on here the difference of uh, between a commission and a committee and how uh, the House position would still be uh, maintained? Um. Well, the uh, a committee is a, a committee, um, uh, a joint committee of the House and Senate in this case that, uh, that it has um, limited, uh, 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 a limited time span to address the responsibilities given to us, basically the life of the, uh, the current session. Um, and it uh, has no members other than legislative members on it, typically anyway. Um, whereas a commission is, uh, is a body that uh, often, I think, maybe always includes uh, uh, additional members appointed from outside of the legislature and uh, has uh, often more dur a, a longer period uh, to address the issues given to it than just the uh, time span of the session. Um, and I'm sure there's an array of commissions, an array of committees that don't exactly uh, fit into the contours of that, but that's the general idea. Um, and uh, in terms of, uh, uh, well, I don't re remember the second part of your question. I, I, I'm assuming, uh, sir, that uh, that by retaining that we can still establish a position if it ever comes down to committee of a conference so between the two bills so that we can uh, if we have something that we disagree with them on absolutely and it's in entirely within our control assuming the commission bill is, is sent to this committee uh, we can uh, make recommendations as we see fit uh, with respect to both both bills thank you madam chair i just wanted to Clarification for individuals that haven't run across that yet. Representative Meyer? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can you refresh my memory, Representative? Do members of the commission that are not part of the legislature get paid mileage? I think that needs to be put into the bill that mileage will be provided, but it, it usually is. But I don't know whether it's usually is. I shouldn't say that. I, I, I've, I've seen mileage provided for uh, with with commissions, but I can't speak beyond that. Other comments or discussion on the motion to retain House Bill 220? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Janigian. Yes. Mm -hmm. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. The clerk votes yes. Representative Nodder. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Representative uh, Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Menjapudi. Yes. Representative Schomburg. Yes. 
Representative Fellows? Yes. Representative Bolton? Yes. Representative Elberger? Yes. Representative Leapley? Yes. Representative Smith? Yes. And the chair? Yes. 20 to nothing. The vote being 20 to nothing, the retain motion succeeds. And we will close the executive session on House Bill 220. Okay, now we are going to move on to House Bill 450. So we will now open the executive session on House Bill 450, which is relative to removing the net operating loss deduction limit on taxable income under the business profits tax. And the chair will recognize Representative Janigan for motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion to retain. I second that motion, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, motion is made to retain by Representative Janigan and seconded by Representative Schamberg. Would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this bill needs some additional um, work. We need to look to see, you know, right now there's a, New Hampshire has a $10 million limit on deductions and a 10 year limit and also an 80% limit on the amount um, that can be deducted. So we need to look at all those in more detail and see how um, things will get affected. Any other comments on the retain motion? Okay, seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ellery. Uh, yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Nodder. Yes. Representative Sodi. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Representative Ames. Yes. Representative Southworth. Yes. Representative Malloy. Oh, no, excuse me, Roger Pudi. <laughs> yes. I, I, I had prepared these in advance, but I didn't know about your substitution. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't yeah. finish last. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Representative Schomburg. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Yes. And uh, Representative Sandburn. Yes. 20 to 0. Okay, the vote being 20 to 0, the retained motion passes, and we will close the, uh, the exec session on House Bill 450. Wow, this is efficient. Okay, we will now open up the exec session on House Bill 486 relative to vehicle registrations and reciprocal toll collection enforcement agreements. And the chair will recognize Representative Ors for a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a motion to ITL this legislation. Is there a second? Second that motion, Madam Chair. Representative Schamberg seconds. Representative Ors, would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, yes, after doing my research, I feel that uh, House Bill 486 would harm our constituents more than help, and it would ch make a tremendous change in costs. We'd, we'd have to spend a lot of money revising our system, and the information provided by DOT and Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV, uh, makes it pretty clear that the system in place now is very good and I think it'll be better once the automation process is completed. Other comments on the ITL motion or on the bill? Yes, Representative Platt. One concern I had got resolved and I initially thought maybe the punishment didn't uh, fit the crime, but uh, these are scoff laws that have uh, passed through tolls 10 times before any notice is sent out. Then they get all kinds of time for a second notice, and then a third notice. Then it goes to the DMV, and they get a, uh, a $50 fine after all of that. And to me, that's proportional, so I support this. Other comments from the committee? Representative Rochefort. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think we heard a lot of uh, testimony and a lot of facts over the last couple of days on this, and, and I don't disagree with a lot of it. What I do disagree with is, does the punishment fit the crime? Uh, Representative Platt just uh, commented on that, and and when it comes down to it, you could you could be a chronic offender, and you could be somebody who is ignoring the the uh, notifications. But at the end of the day, we could be revoking. And again, I acknowledge the fact that driving is a privilege, 
but we could be revoking uh, somebody's privilege to drive in New Hampshire based on an administrative uh, $2 or $20 and five cent uh, fine that they didn't pay. Now, we, we do restrain people and, and revoke people's ability to drive for things like drunk driving and reckless driving, um, speeding tickets. Paying a toll does not rise to that level. And uh, I don't think the punishment fits the crime in this. So uh, I will be voting against the motion. Representative Alby. Thank you. I'd like to reiterate that the crime in, in this circumstance can uh, destroy our turnpike fund. And our turnpike fund keeps the turnpikes going. Uh, all of the f the fines, as I understand it, are just about all of the revenue that they get. They have bonding responsibilities that the state also stands behind that um, they have to fulfill. And if we make it easy for somebody from Massachusetts or Connecticut or Maine or New York to to come onto our turnpike system and evade the tolls every single time they come. There's going to be a lot more of that behavior, and we're going to have a much harder time keeping our turnpike system solvent and, pay, and uh, satisfying the bond people. So I think that it's a direct attack on government, even though it's just one of a number of them. And also, they don't pay because they don't pay because they uh, did not pay a $21 fine. They pay because they didn't pay a $21 fine a minimum of 10 times. And it sounds like it's more like 100 at this point. Other comments? Yes, Representative Ulrey. First point, um, the fines by the Turnpike Authority are not crimes. There are civil penalties. Um, that needs to be understood the incidents of DWI or DUI or whatever the hell you want to call it or speeding, those are crimes uh, from a violation up to uh, uh, Class A felony depending upon what happens as a result of the wreck. Nothing in, if this bill passes, nothing would change with the ability of the Turnpike Authority to collect any violation whatsoever other than they would not be able to use it this as a wedge to revoke someone's ability to drive, uh, to use the highway in uh, who resides out of state. In the same fashion, Massachusetts or Maine, which have a history of abuse within their system, would not be able to revoke somebody's in ability to drive in New Hampshire for a civil infraction in another state. I know of, and maybe somebody can correct me, but I know of no other type of activity where you can use the power of a badge and a gun of government to restrict a person's ability to drive, to make a living, to take somebody to and from, or have them uh, uh, seize their property without having a chance to go to civil court and hash it out. Um, I'm going to vote against. Other comments? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. And to remind, the, the vote is to ITL, so a yes would be voting for ITL. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Uh, no. Representative Doucette? Yes. Representative Murner? Yes. Representative uh, Plett votes yes. Representative Nodder? Yes. Representative Sodi? Yes. Representative Ors? Yes. Representative Rochefort? No. Representative Almy? Representative Ames? Yes. Representative Southworth? Yes. Representative Malloy? Uh, Representative Benjaputi? Yes. Oh, she should hit me. 
Representative Schomburg. Yes. Representative Fellows. Yes. Representative Bolton. Yes. Representative Elberger. Yes. Representative Leapley. Yes. Representative Smith. Yes. And the chair. Yes. Okay, it's a vote is 18 to 2. Okay, the motion of the vote of 18 to 2, the motion of ITL carries. Uh, and that will close the executive session on House Bill 486. Uh, will there be a minority report on that? Okay, let me just ask on that because it's the only one that has a report so far. There will be one? Okay, well, good. There we, there we go. We'll, we'll just make note of that. Uh, Representative Ullery will be doing the blurb. Oh, uh, for the ITL motion, Representative Ors will be writing the blurb on ITL. Yes, good. Okay, one more. We will now open the public, uh, excuse me, the executive session on House Bill 510 relative to removing the exemption for premium cigars from the tobacco tax. The chair recognizes Representative Rochefort for a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a motion inexpedient to legislate for HB 510. Is there a second? Sure, second. Representative Platt seconds that. Representative Rocher, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So this bill, HB 510, uh, would eliminate the current tax exemption on premium cigars that is currently enjoyed in the state. Um, and if the repeal was eliminated, a tax of 65.03% would be imposed on premium cigars. Now, I think it's important to realize that the premium cigars enjoy a successful industry in New Hampshire in large part because the exemption from this um, this tax results in business that comes in from neighboring states. Furthermore, this business likely would be lost uh, to internet sales if the exemption was, was pulled. Um, and currently only about $967,000 is anticipated uh, from this tax if it were to be uh, applied to premium cigars. Representative Platt. I, that $967,000 is a static analysis. I think the true number would be zero because people would just stop. All the shops would close, the business would be killed, and they do it online. Representative Elberger. Thank you, Madam Chair. As I understand it, and I'm happy to be corrected if I misunderstand it, this um, exemption was initially put into place because New Hampshire had an actual industry of manufacturing hand-rolled cigars. That is no longer the case. Am I correct on both of those assumptions? Okay. Um, given that, I look at the storefronts that I see in Nashua where they're empty because they have lost business. Uh, our biggest tax base, uh, tax pay, business taxpayer in Nashua, the Pheasant Lane Mall, is has lost somewhere around a third of its um, income because of uh, online purchases, because people are no longer buying those things. And I have a difficult time understanding why we are choosing this one item to say we want to protect where we don't put that same kind of effort or interest into protecting. So I will be voting against an ITL here. Other comments from the committee? Uh, yes, Representative Ors. Thank you, Madam Chair. So my concern with this is initially when we heard testimony, there were 30 or 31 cigar retailers in the greater Massachusetts area. When the tax came in to be, the, uh, the number of retailers in the cigar industry, premium cigar industry, was one. Uh, they either moved to New Hampshire or they just went out of business. And my concern is, even though it may show a little bit of favoritism, I'd hate to kill the industry here. Whether it's manufactured here or not, I guess in my opinion, I hate to be driving people out of business. 
seeing uh, associate businesses, surrounding businesses take a hit financially also. And what have we done? Well, we've, okay, so now we've leveled the playing field. We put the 65% tax on premium cigars, but we kill it. And I, I hate to see storefronts like Representative Alberger is talking about just because we want to be, I don't know, fair or they, we, they got to take the hit because everybody else is. Maybe it's time we change our thinking and cut these other uh, retailers a break so that we don't have empty storefronts. Thank you very much. Representative Platt. This is probably the umpteenth time that this bill has come up. Every two years it comes up. Now, that doesn't, I mean, the, the sponsor has every right to bring it up again. But after, after the 19th try with a zero, do you think the message would be delivered? So we are going to give him another one. Representative Allman. I'd just like to repeat the history of this tax because it was, I thought, uh, exemption, because I started it. Uh, it was, and I had heard nothing, and I still have heard nothing except from you, that there was one place that was rolling cigars here. It is a very lowly paid uh, occupation in uh, the places where it is found, and and you usually end up with a lot of asthma, too. Um but on it is there because no no tobacco except the cigarettes were being taxed and they had developed these sweet cigars which are actually uh cigarettes without paper around them that are very light on tobacco and are filled with flavors uh, and they developed a number of other child-friendly attractants, and they were selling them in the pharmacies right next to the Coke or the Coca-Cola that is not co cocaine, <laughs> and and um, and uh, toys, and in places where you couldn't see they were shoplifting. So um, I was trying to get after that, and I decided to get after taxation of OTP, other tobacco products. And there was a very uh, inveterate smoker of prime cigars on our committee, but more importantly, there was an extremely important senator who was smoking uh, uh, these cigars in the Senate that had was going to kill anything that came over to him that uh, had those attached. And that's why we put that in in the first place. But the other reason we put it in was that not just one, but four uh, tobacco sellers uh, came and stood in front of us and said, we're here because you don't have this tax. If you have this tax, we're, we're going on the totally on the internet and or we're leaving the state. And we have no means still to be able to collect this tax from the people who go on the internet. Representative Janigan. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I'd also just like to point out that um, I, I do believe that um, the cigar bars would start closing. And let's not forget that once that starts happening, we also are gonna see a reduction in M and R uh, tax from them because they're also selling um, drinks and in some liquor and in some cases um, sandwiches or whatever else they they sell. So it's going to M and R would also take a hit. So therefore, I support the ITL motion. Representative Ames. I, excuse me. I too uh, wish that uh, this bill didn't keep appearing in front of us, but when it does, I have to do what I think I should do, which is vote against it. Um, and why do I uh, vote, a, yeah, vote against the ITL, I should say? Um, and why? It's because I, I believe that uh, it sends the wrong message, that it uh, singles out this particular way in which tobacco 
is consumed and uh, says it's okay, basically. It take, makes it tax-free, whereas all other uh, tobacco, other tobacco being a, a, a term of art in, the, in this context, uh, is uh, subject to tax. This one premium cigar is not. I think it should be. We tax tobacco at a high rate for good reason. Oh, sorry, I twiddle, fiddling with my hands. Um, but I won't repeat myself. Um, the uh, argument, I've heard the argument, and I know it's uh, believed by many, that uh, somehow the way in which uh, uh, big cigars are smoked uh, uh, means less goes into your lungs or whatever and uh, is less harmful. I've read a lot of research on this. I, um, I, I'm, my takeaway is that that's not the case, that it's harmful. Um, and, uh, and so that's my position. It's, it's on the merits, on the public health aspect of this, and that we shouldn't be singling out <coughs> one particular form of, uh, of tobacco packaging and uh, exempt it from tax. Thank you. Other comments from the committee? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, and the motion uh, before us is ITL on House Bill 510. Representative Janigian. Yes. Representative Ullery. Yes. Representative Doucette. Yes. Representative Murner. Yes. The clock clerk votes yes. Representative Nodder. Yes. Representative Soti. Yes. Representative Ors. Yes. Representative Rochefort. Yes. Representative Almy. Representative Ames. No. Representative Southworth? No. Representative uh, Menjapudi? No. Representative Schomburg? Yes. Representative Fellows? Yes. Representative Bolton? No. Representative Elberger? No. Representative Leapley? Yes. Representative, Sm uh, uh, Representative Smith? Yes. Represent uh, the chair? Yes. Okay, the vote is 15 to 5. Of ITL. The vote being 15 to 5, the ITL motion carries on House Bill 510. Will there be a minority report? Yes. Okay, Representative Ames will write a minority report. And who will write the majority report? Uh, Representative Rochefort, will you do that? Okay, great. Okay, I think we just got done a lot of work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We uh, will close this uh, executive session and we will see you all tomorrow at house session and uh, plan on a long day tomorrow. And then on Monday at 9 a.m. we will reconvene for a public hearing on House Bill 639 and then another public hearing at one o'clock. We will be off on Tuesday, which is town meeting day. And then on Wednesday, March 15th, we will reconvene for executing whatever we have left. Great. Travel safely. And if you can get your blurbs from everything today to me as soon as possible, uh, the house clerk would be very, very, very happy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>